Hey, what's going on, everybody? We're Thank you for joining me for my first break. We're going to be breaking this 2019 Tops Series update. We're going to be chasing Vladimir Guerrero, his rookie card. We've got a few people participating in this break, along with myself. In addition to just some regular hanger boxes and some fat packs, I actually went ahead and found a couple of fat packs that had a guaranteed relic or autograph in them. So that way we can make sure we're all getting, have a chance of getting something cool in addition to a chance at the Vladimir Guerrero. So how this uh, break's going to be working is there's the four of us that have a selection of teams. So we each got to pick one team. And then on top of that, we're all going to get randomly selected two teams. The Blue Jays being one of the teams that's uh, going to be randomly selected. So this is not the order. I was just putting the teams in to uh, practice it. There's the do again, so we will do it three times, and then after the third time, we're just gonna going down the list, fill in our spreadsheet, and then we'll start our break. So, one, two, and three. All right, so the Phillies and the Mariners are going to be our first team, filling out Kevin. And unfortunately, I don't know of a quicker way to get this done yet, so hopefully I uh, figure it out. But I'm going to go ahead, here, I'll pause it, here, I'll put it again on here so you can see it real quick, just to make sure I'm not up to anything. But then I'm going to go ahead and fill it in. Actually, I'll just let you, you guys can just for, fast forward to when this is done. Because I'm sure this is not going to be a, enjoyable to watch. But, unfortunately, it's got to get done. And I almost took the Mar the uh, White Sox, but at the last minute I decided I wanted to get the Pirates. I kind of wanted to get get a chance of getting a Eloy rookie uh, debut, but that being said, I kind of would rather take a shot at uh, the All Star jerseys and hoping maybe it's Josh Bell because I think that would be pretty cool and. I'm assuming that's what the relics are going to be, is be the all-star jerseys, so that'll be cool if I were able to pull one of those. There, how are we looking here? We got two more coming for bubblegum. Athletics and the Twins. And Dan had the Padres, which obviously, if I was going to be taking teams, I wouldn't. Have, that would have been where I went first, being a big Tatis fan. But that's all right. I was. I would rather sell the spots out, just get get to know new people, start a. Uh, Kind of building more relationships, I think that'll be cool. Having more people to talk with, trade with, things like that. All right, and it looks like I should have everyone left. Cardinals and Orioles. So hopefully, uh, I don't think there'll be too many Orioles coming my way. D-backs and Braves. I like those, especially the Braves. There's probably a pretty good amount of Braves relics in this. They're young guys. Ooh, and I got the Blue Jays. Well, I didn't rig it. You guys saw me do that. But that being said, if I hit a few, we're going to have to share the wealth. Uh, 
All right, so I'm gonna put this to the side, but that's how these will all be split up. All right, and as you can see behind me, I've got a whole bunch, or in front of me, I've got a whole bunch of Gypsy Queen, so sooner or later we're gonna get to break, break all that too. But for tonight, we're gonna be breaking all this Topps 2019 series update, of course. We're gonna be looking for one of these, Vladimir Guerrero. So without further ado, let's uh, let's get started. We'll save these two. These are the two fat packs that are gonna have their uh, guaranteed hits in them. So we'll leave those for the end. As far as whether to start with the fat packs or the hanger boxes, I've actually had pretty good success out of these hanger boxes. The one hanger box I have opened I actually pulled out a Tanaka All-Star jersey, which being a Yankees fan, I was pretty excited about that. So I think we'll start with the hanger boxes. So hopefully we get all kinds of good stuff for everyone in this. Parallels and autographs and all kinds of stuff. Wow, all right, so right on the start, there's a Vladimir Guerrero rookie. So that's a hell of a way to start things out. So I'm obviously gonna be real careful taking this off. Get that in a soft sleeve right off the bat. Well, now I really wish this would have been totally sold out because I don't like being the one to not only get the Blue Jays, but then literally the first card is the Vladimir Guerrero rookie that we're all chasing out of this. So it's obviously very good for me, but would have been a lot cooler, honestly, to pull it for somebody else. So let's take a look at what else. Hopefully we've got some other good stuff in here. I do like the looks of this Gregory Soto rookie. The angle on it's cool. There's DJ LeMahieu. Yankees fans like myself are hoping he has another big season like he does. I was watching uh, around the horn earlier today, and they were discussing the proposal to get baseball up and running in July with the 82 game season. And obviously, you know, we're all hoping. There we go. So there's something for Kevin. I know Kevin was hoping, was picked a Brewer, so I'm assuming he's looking for those. Now it's the rookie debut, not the actual rookie card, but still. I know that's something he'll be looking forward to, so I'll get a soft sleeve for that. There's Nick Senzel, which that's, it's not the rookie, it's the rookie debut, but that is why I took the Reds. I'm looking to get a Nick Senzel rookie. So that's another one I'm happy about. Nick Senzel, I don't know if you guys have uh, paid much attention to him going up until now, but he has quite a bit of power, and he could be a pretty big top prospect. The only problem is, oh wow, right behind it is an actual Nick Senzel rookie. So I'm definitely hitting my cards in this break, and uh, I guess this is a lesson learned for everyone who didn't Buy a, buy a spot. Don't leave them open for me because I'm just going to hit everything.
But uh, yeah, so as I'm talking about Nick Senzel, cards right, one right after each other. But it looked like the biggest problem he's going to have is his position was going to be kind of blocked for playing time. He's got a good bat, but there's just not really a great spot for him. But that being said, with the new rules, with uh, the DH moving over to the National League, he's one of those players that will probably benefit from that quite a bit. Open up more playing time, and he's got a bat, and he's young. I mean, can make use of it. So that's probably something to watch. If you guys are uh, Dynasty Fantasy baseball players or just like to collect prospects that potentially might go up in value, he'd be a good one to keep an eye on. But as far as the proposal going for uh, the 82-game season, it's, it's obviously... You know, the first proposal, the players weren't very happy with it, and you can definitely understand why. <clears throat> Main problem is, you know, the players at the top making the most money, the ones taking the biggest pay cuts. So your Mike Trouts, your Clayton Kershaws, you know, your guys on your monster deals. So they're going to be, you know, the most financially penalized, speaking of Clayton Kershaw. And there's his teammate right behind him, Walker Bueller who I will bring both of these gentlemen into my Keeper Fantasy League this year. Walker Bueller will cost my second round pick, and Clayton Kershaw will cost my third. But that is well worth it. Giving uh, our format, that's a cool card. But giving our format, with that being a Keeper, in every league, or every year you hold a player their uh, cost goes up by one round. It uh, makes it so the pool year after year gets progressively shallower. There's a Josh Van Meter rookie with a 150-year stamp in the bottom, followed by a Tim Raines family business. So we must be in the insert section. There's an Andrew McCutcheon throwback card. So that'll be cool for Kevin. Hopefully he likes Andrew McCutcheon. And there's a George Brett perennial all-star. And a Mel Ott perennial all-star. New York Giants. Well, luckily, we uh, know who that's going to. And speaking of Walker Bueller and the owner of this Mel Ott, we'll also be getting this Walker Bueller. Oh, nice, and there's a Vladimir Guerrero rookie debut. So that's cool, I didn't have one of those yet. But as I was saying with our uh, format for our fantasy league, yeah, every year it goes up in cost uh, one draft pick, so it gets progressively more expensive. But then because of that also the pool just, oh, there's a cool Pete Alonso rookie for Bubblegum, the owner of our New York teams. So I'll get that soft sleeve and then top loaded for you. But yeah, so I mean, I think there's there's probably four, four to six of us this year who will actually have a first round pick to make use of. And of that, I mean, there's probably at most two players that are traditionally going to be first round players. And then it gets even shallower. I mean, I did a mock draft kind of just taking a look at it. And it... Uh, kind of appears to me that once it's all said and done, we're going to have around two players in the first round and two players traditionally in the second round that are available all the way down the line, which does not leave a lot of room for improving your team. If you're, uh, you know, if you're sitting there with high draft picks and there's nothing, uh, nothing to do, All right, so there is our first hanger box. So I would say, all things considered, no big inserts. But and again, I feel bad hitting all the hitting all the big rookies so far. But you know, you gotta buy. Uh, sometimes you get lucky, and well, I guess I didn't hit all of them. Luckily, Bubblegum, he did hit his uh, Pete Alonso. That's a cool card. 
But, uh, yeah, I got both my Nick Senzel and my Vladimir Guerrero rookies out of that. So we'll move on to the second hanger box. Let's see if I can open this one a little cleaner. I'm not the best at opening these hanger boxes cleanly. They want to be open from the bottom, not the top. All right, well, we know we're starting off with a, a Kettle Marte. A Cal Control. Which, that is not the Padres rookie pitcher I would want. Dan's our owner of the Padres in this break, so I'm hoping not only is he getting some cool Tadis stuff, but hopefully he's a, I'm assuming he's a Chris Paddock fan as well, because his rookie's in this set. I'm a really big Chris Paddock fan, who is also on my keeper team. I've got him, I think he's uh, in the 12th round for me. I took Paddock and Tadis right after each other on the turn, so I do own both of them uh, one round apart, which obviously, well, there's a Cole Tucker rookie for Pittsburgh. There's Adam Jones when he's still playing over in America. Oh, that's cool. Brennan Rogers rookie. Let's check out and see who's got the Rockies. That's Dan. Dan's got the Rockies. So there's a Brendan Rogers rookie for Dan. So we'll get that soft sleeved up for you. But yeah, my pitching uh my pitching staff has the potential to be pretty loaded. We've got a lot of good options. It's almost kind of painful on who to throw back because you can only keep seven players total. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if my options are Walker Bueller in the second, Clayton Kershaw in the third. I've got Chris Paddock in the 12th. I've got Julio Urias, I think, round 15. I've got Josh Hader, I believe, round 13. So it... It gives me a lot of options whether I want to just, you know, stick to the tried and true aces. And it's not so much, there we go. There's a regular Keston here in Keston Hero rookie for our Brewers owner. So we'll get that soft sleeve for you. Glad to see he pulled, uh, we got his top rookie out of the set for him. Very good. There's a Mitch Keller rookie. That's a cool picture by Jonathan LeCroy. And I did have Luis Severino on my team for quite a year as a Yankees fan and a follower of prospects. I was pr on Severino pretty early on and had him for an insanely low cost, but due to his injury issues last year, I was in the midst of a playoff push, and so I kind of traded away a lot of my uh, long-term assets to try to make a run and win the title, which I got second, so it didn't totally pan out, but uh, that said, I traded Severino in a pretty good packet, got a pretty big haul for him, and uh, in addition to you know, getting a haul that helped me do all that season. It, uh, now looking at it, oh, look at this, we got a Jose Barrios, a gold all-star, so we'll see who's got the twins. I would not be unhappy if that was my card, but it is not. That is Bubblegum's card, so congratulations. I'm a big Jose Barrios fan. Talented guy. You got it in the gold parallel, so we'll flip it over here. Once we've got it soft sleeved up, and take a look at the number for you. And that is number 718 out of 2019. So that's a cool card for you to pull. And then we've got a Blake Parker. The 150 stamp. Here's the throwback Chris Paddock. As I was just typing him up, that's a really cool card. I will be honest, I'm jealous of that. 
I would have very much liked to have pulled that. So, again, I would have been very happy had the Padres not been taken, and now would have been all the happier. But I'm glad to see this. These cards actually going out to people too. So, hopefully, like I said, you're a big. Uh, you are a big Chris Paddock fan. And now to the rest of our inserts. Looks like we've got a Roy Halliday. Boy, was he a monster back in the day. Got another perennial all-star of Clayton Kershaw. And then I have not seen that insert before, so I wonder if that's a, a Target special or something like that. But the Shohanis. Yeah, I think they must be. They look like they're from a big set. So those will go to our Angels owner, which is Bubblegum. All right. Finish what's left of this hanger box. There's another Pete Alonso home run challenge rookie or home run derby rookie card. So he's got two of those going to Mr. Bubblegum. So that's cool. Yeah, as far as hitting, I'm not nearly as well situated, but I also think hitting is a lot easier to find than pitching will be this season. So, But I do have, as I mentioned, Tatis. I've got him pretty cheap. I've got Victor Robles in a pretty cheap contract. I could bring Machado back, Joey Gallo. I've got reasonably priced. So I'm not without options on offense. It just seems like pitching is becoming scarcer and scarcer. And I've got the opportunity to uh, kind of dominate in pitching, I think, all things considered. So especially if I bring bring back both Kershaw and Bueller. I mean, Paddock is obviously a monster, and I don't think I can afford to bring Urias back, but it's hard not to bring back Hayter. So uh, my suspicion is that no matter what I do, I'm going to be drafting a lot of hitting early and kind of ignoring pitching just because I will be loaded. So let's to go over that real quick. Bubblegum and uh, Kevin did pretty well on that one. So we've got that Pete Alonso, Chris Paddock, Jose Barrios Gold, Keston Hero rookie, and Brendan Rodgers rookie. All right, now it's time for the fat packs. Then as far as the Padres go, not only are we lucky enough to, uh, I guess we'll get all these fat packs out in front of us now. So these are our regular fat packs, and then over here we've got our hot packs. But hopefully even these will have some, some kind of hit would be nice. The Padres next, well I guess this season if we play, depending if the players decide to, uh, Take a deal or counter with something that the owners will take. We will be looking at uh, Mackenzie Gore coming up for the Padres. And he should be just as good, I think, as Chris Paddock. So with that being the case, the Padres, I think, will be cont real contenders for a long time to come. So that will be a fun team to watch. Oh, that's cool. That is a sharp card for Bubblegum, our Dodgers owner, Jackie Robinson. That is a very sharp-looking card. We'll get that soft-sleeved up as well. And all these will be going out with top loaders as well, just because I definitely don't want your cards getting damaged. That's a sharp-looking card. Pretty jealous of that one. That's probably my favorite card I've pulled today, actually. I really like that. Then we've got Chris Sale. Perennial All-Star. David Robertson. 
There's Joey Gallo, one of my home run options I still have on my team. Which it is tempting, because he definitely has a lot of power. There's Gary Sanchez. Look at that, two Joey Gallos right, right in a row, as we're talking about him. He's got a whole lot of power, though. That is for sure. That's a cool card right there for the Yankees. Yeah, Joey Gallo absolutely has got the power to lead uh, Major League Baseball in home runs multiple times in his career, remaining career, I think. Um, wouldn't surprise me at all if he hit 50 home runs in a you know full season with the juice ball that we're you know seemingly playing with nowadays. All right, we've got four fat packs left to go. Well, I see something shiny in the back. Try to be patient and let the anticipation build up for it, though. There's a Jeff McNeil rookie. Well, there's a Babe Ruth greatest moment, which is blocking whatever is shiny behind it. Which is a Santana Domingo. Or Domingo Santana, excuse me. Alright, we'll get that packaged up. Obviously, we would have been hoping for one of our rookies, but nonetheless, you're always happy to get one of these rainbow foils. They're not super common. The Babe Ruth's pretty cool, too. I think, actually, it's probably cooler, despite not being as rare. All right, there's a Alex Rodriguez perennial all-star. So that'll go to our Yankees owner as well. There's a pair of Rockies all-stars, David Dell and Trevor Story, which I pulled a David Dell all-star game used jersey, or not all-star jersey, a uh, regular jersey, out of a Topps 2020 Series 1. So I thought that was really cool. That's a cool-looking Acuna. Yeah, I've heard talk that uh, if this Major League Baseball season resumes, and uh, there's a good chance they won't do it, won't be able to play in the regular stadiums, so that could obviously really affect Colorado being, you know, more than any other team just because of how unique their stadium effects are with their elevation. So it's going to be really hard to, you know, I heard some analysts talking today would you if they would even project Story and Arenado in the same round where they're currently going, giving that being the prevailing wisdom of what might be coming down the pipe. I see another shiny one in here too, so that's cool. Wait till we get to there. Adam Jones over in Japan. There's another Brendan Rogers rookie. I'm gonna get that in a soft sleeve. Very good. And I actually did draft Brendan Rodgers last year in my uh, my keeper draft, but he was one of the assets I was selling at the trade deadline, trying to make a run at things. And obviously hasn't, uh, he hasn't panned out yet, so so far it's kind of looking like I might have made the right move selling him. I had to sell Joe Adele with him. Which I was not thrilled with. There's a Verlander All-Star. Alright, now we're to the insert section of the pack. We've got a Hugh Duffy, which is blocking a foil. And it is Charlie Blackman. So, that is going to go to our Rockies owner. And our Rockies owner is Dan. So, congratulations, Dan. You hit a rainbow foil. Charlie Blackman. Get that all sleeved up for you as well. Yeah. 
That's a pretty beautiful card. Yeah, chromes and foils are definitely some of my favorite favorite cards to collect. All right, finish off. Ooh, Ricky Henderson. That's a cool uh, Oakland A. And that is also for Bubblegum. So he's doing pretty well on the inserts. But yeah, with the way the altitude affects the ball, historically speaking, it's rather, uh, there's a Vladimir Guerrero in the rookie debut. It's historically kind of uh, allowed players to have pretty wide splits between their home and away stats. With their home stats being particularly juiced up, and so the theory goes, if they are unable to play their games in Colorado, that particularly the power hitters like Story... And uh, Arenado, their numbers are going to be pretty effective, although Dow's obviously would be as well. All right, we're down to our last two fat packs. And these are the ones that are supposed to have the guaranteed uh, relics in them or autos. So hopefully we, uh, we get some cool for you guys. Well, I do see it looks like uh, something might be there in the middle, but we shall see. Starting off with the Mark Reynolds card. And I did want to do this uh, draft on YouTube Live, but as I unfortunately found out last moment... You need to have a thousand subscribers, or at least more than I do now, to be able to go live. So you have to figure out something to do about that. There's a cool Michael Brantley, which that is mine because I selected the Astros. And pretty soon here we should be coming up on our big hit. There's a Randy Johnson perennial all-star, and that is also mine. So I'm happy about that. That's pretty cool. There's a, oh, that's a cool family business. I like that Vladimir Guerrero. It's got the 150 year stamp on it too. So I'm actually going to soft sleeve that up. Oh, wow. That's serial numbered. So that is serial numbered out of 150. So this was definitely a good break to hit the Blue Jays on. That is freaking awesome. Because I think that, se that uh, insert series is pretty damn cool, too. Very cool. Well, that's obviously my, uh, my favorite card so far of the break. But we haven't even got to our, uh, to our relic yet. Hmm. That being said, I'm not seeing it, so I'm kind of wondering if that was what they were considering our hit. Which, if that is the case, that is not what I would consider a hit. So, I'm going to do something at the end of this to make sure we uh, are still getting our two autographs or relics. In this, I'm not going to let them make me a liar, but who, the vendor that sold me those will be getting a negative review on eBay. I've got one more to hopefully get back in, get back in some of my good graces. Now, luckily, I've got a, I've got some hot packs that I bought from a few different dealers, and some of them I've tried out already, and I know that they're a little more reliable than some other ones. Like this one, I'm still trying out, so hopefully. Hopefully we've got something in this one.
There's a Kevin Biggio rookie. But yeah, it'll, uh, it's definitely going to make baseball rather interesting, depending on if we're able to even play an 82-game season or if we end up having to play fewer games than that. Definitely reduces the likelihood of, uh, or excuse me, increases the likelihood of somebody being able to perhaps make a run at things that they wouldn't be able to. There's a nice Michael Chavis rookie. For our Red Sox owner, there's Nolan Ryan. And for some reason, that Roy Halladay feels kind of thickered. Yep, okay, so this Roy Halladay is numbered 37 out of 50. So I could feel it, and that's a Blue Jay, so I am hitting everything today. It seems uh, all the hits were Blue Jays, although... I wouldn't consider that a hit either, as far as how they're describing it. So I'm definitely gonna have some uh, a little bit of beef with this uh, vendor, being that I think these are what they're describing as the hits. And I mean, they're you know serializing their good hits, but they're not an autograph or a relic, which is what was described to me and what I advertised to you guys. So that. I'm not real happy with, but luckily, like I said, I've got a few other hot packs laying around that we're going to have to break open now just to make sure somebody's going home with some relics or autographs or something. All right, so that is the end of our Tops 2019 series update. Real quick, I'm going to go dig out some other hot packs just so we... Uh, We've got some autographs and relics in this break because, like I said, just because that vendor didn't do, follow through does not mean I will. So give me one moment. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. Supposedly, this has got a guaranteed autograph, and this has got a guaranteed relic or autograph as well. So being that this is 2019, I figured this made the most sense. And Gypsy Queen, that's, uh, I think, especially if it's got an autograph, like it says, kind of an upgrade over 2019 series update anyway. So hopefully this makes everyone, everyone happy. So we'll start out with... The Tops 2019. And hopefully this has got a... This actually could have a Tatis rookie in it. So hopefully we can make our Padres owner happy. Although obviously it's got a Pete Alonso rookie potentially in it as well. So that would be awesome. If we all could get some big hits out of this. All right, well, at least this one looks like I'm pretty confident we've got a relic in here. Oh, what is that? That is not a relic. That is looks like a Pete Alonso mini ping pong paddle. What is that? Baseball stars candy. No idea. Oh, I guess it's like a lollipop or something. Well, hopefully that's not our head either. If so, then I will be leaving several more negative reviews. Oh, there we are. So for Milwaukee Brewers owner, which is Kevin, we've got a Jesus Aguilar, game used jersey. So very good. They did not make me a liar. So we'll get that sleeved up for you now. Although, this might be fat enough that a soft sleeve is not going to cover it and it won't. I don't want to ding your corners, so don't you worry. I'll find a safe way to ship it to you. 
But congratulations on your game used relic. All right, let's finish the pack. And hopefully we get a big rookie out of this too. Wouldn't that be something? There's a UC Kikuchi rookie, although he hasn't been too impressive quite yet. All right, so we've at least got one relic card going out. That makes me feel happier. Now for this Gypsy Queen. Alright, now they advertise that there is an autograph in here, so I'm not sure how they would know that. But, let's hope that they do. We've got a Dylan Cease rookie that keeps falling out. And there's our autograph, and it is a David Peralta. Well, there we go. All right, so we do have an autograph and a relic out of the break. I know it wasn't 2019 update like I'd said, but as you watch in the break, certainly wasn't for me trying to scam you guys. The vendor that uh, sold that to me had claimed that there was an autograph or a relic in there. But that's all right. We've got our autograph and relic now. And the very last two cards of that pack are Gene Segura, David Fletcher. All right, well, thank you very much, guys, for joining in the first break. And uh, hopefully we can sell out even more of these spots next time. And my good luck pulling all these cards from me will spill over to you guys. So you guys get a chance to pull some of these better cards. All right, everyone, have a good night. Take care.